Space Time Badass here. Today I'm going to be answering a question that was asked of me for the Lucid Dreaming Day live stream that I didn't get a chance to answer in the stream. And it came from Reddit from someone called Third Eye, and basically they just want clarification for what I mean when I say that I use Lucid Dreaming for self-improvement and personal growth. And the reason that I may have been very vague in the terms that I used in the past is there are so many different ways to go about it. But in the past, when I really thought about it to try to find that common thread that goes through all of the practices, I think I've nailed it down pretty good in what I call the three eyes of lucid dreaming for personal growth. And the three eyes are introspection, identification, and integration. And what that means is we introspect in the dream, and we are hoping to make an identification about ourselves that maybe we didn't realize or acknowledge before, and then we integrate that into our daily lives by changing our habits or doing something in our waking lives to improve the situation that we've learned about. Here in the waking life, if you want to introspect, you're going to need to do something like meditation or another mindfulness practice, basically something that creates distance between your awareness and the experience of what it's like to be you. Through that, you can make observations that will improve your life, but in the dream, we are given a golden opportunity because everything we interact with is us. So here now, in the waking reality, I am in a room in my home, in front of a green screen, behind some lights and a camera, and these are all separate from me. But if I were to be in this situation in a lucid dream, everything would be me. This room, the green screen, the lights, the camera, it's all me. So with that, introspection can really be anything, but a lot of it is going to be conversational. So now that we kind of have the framework down for what the three eyes are, I'm going to kind of take you through a typical dream experience and what I might do to get some meaning out of it. The first thing that I do is kind of look around and see if anything sticks out to me or, or seems significant to me. And this is another thing that can really be anything. It could be something that just catches your eye or seems interesting or seems off, or it could be something that reminds you of someone or another time in your life. And really the goal is to find something like that and sort of interact with it in any way that you can. And through this interaction, again, we're trying to make an identification of something about self. It could be an object, it could be a place, it could be a person, but more often than not, you're going to still be having a conversation about that, whether it be with a dream character or with the dream awareness itself. And remember that any question that you want answered can be answered from the dream itself, even there, if there isn't a person present, but you can also spawn in people to ask questions as well. Now, when I say that something sticks out to you or it seems like something has significance, here's what I mean by that. I'll, I'll try to relate it in waking life terms. So here in waking life, if I am next to a perfectly cleaned murder weapon, let's say there's like a knife and it has been used as a murder weapon, it's perfectly clean and there's no outward appearance that it might be a murder weapon, and it's just sitting on the counter and I pass it, I wouldn't know about it. But if I were in a lucid dream, or any dream in general, if I walked by that or saw it or what have you, even if it didn't look like a murder weapon, I would have this feeling of significance or I would somehow know that that's what it was or that it was important or ominous. A lot of the time we are going for feeling. So if an area or a person or what have you has some sort of feeling associated with it, even if it's just intrigue or even if it's all the way up to the scale of being like a nightmarish kind of feeling, I say always go towards that. Nightmares in general can be scary, especially lucid nightmares, but I think that no matter what the nightmare is lucid or not, it's almost always revealing about the self, so I think it's worth it if you're feeling brave. So no matter what it is, definitely start asking questions. A big thing with questions is I would say stay away from the big questions, or at least don't ask them as you would in waking life. When you ask questions like, what is the meaning of life on this grandiose scale, I think that you put a lot of emphasis on that and you have a lot of attachment to what the answer is going to be and you feel like it needs to be something good. And when you have that emotion, I think that the subconscious kind of gets this thing that I call subconscious pressure. So basically you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to have a good answer and the subconscious kind of freezes up and won't give you a good answer. So with things for that, I try to rephrase that question. Remember there are many paths to the same answer. Now in waking life that might be more direct. I ask a question, I get a direct answer from you, but in a dream, it may be a more winding path. In lucid dreams, the most direct path may not be the most direct path. So rather than ask what is the meaning of life on this global or universal scale, you want to downscale that to you and internalize it. So you want to say, what's the meaning of my life? Or what's the highest purpose that I can serve in my life? And that will help eliminate that subconscious pressure. Again, you're really going to have to experiment around with this because everyone is different. So in dreams, you can ask, what do you represent? Or what does this object represent? Or what does this room represent? And you can get um, good answers that way, but more often than not, I haven't. So what I've had to do is pick up an object and say, whose is this? What do you use this for? How did this get here? Why is this here? So it's a bit more of a Sherlock Holmes kind of thing. You're kind of 
trying to uncover something in a lot of cases. And I also want to note that there are a lot of dream characters who I, I think are more two-dimensional. They're meant more to be seen and not to be experienced. That's like if you're on a movie set and there's this guy who's here just to be an extra and then you go up to him in the production and you try to get him to say lines that he never learned. It's kind of that sort of thing. So there can be dream characters that give you more gibberish answers. So I would say that uh, unless a dream character shows themselves to be more than meets the eye through your interaction, then it would be worth interacting with them more, but if not, I would move along. And you could even spawn people who might be more likely to give you the sort of answer that you're looking for depending upon what it is. So if I want a specific answer of a certain type, I might pick a person who might have something profound to say on that that I have a lot of knowledge about. Maybe I've seen their movies or I've seen them do lectures or that sort of thing. You basically want to pick a person to spawn in who you have a lot of data to go off of so that your subconscious can come up with novel things to say through the context of that person rather than trying to force novel things out of a person who really has no context whatsoever. So if you're looking for a spiritual experience, spawning in Jesus or Buddha or someone else of that stature might be a little more fruitful than just going up to the average person and being like, show me something significant. But it can still work if you just say, show me something significant or something like that. There, it's, there's so many different ways that it can manifest itself. And for me, I've had to go the roundabout way, but you might be a more direct person. And so those things might work for you. Really, experimentation in your exploration is key. You wanna figure out how your brain reacts when you do specific things in the dream. And if you're not finding that you're getting good answers one way, you're gonna have to go the scenic route. If all else fails, I would say just resort to meditation, open eye meditation in the dream so you don't lose lucidity. Um, no matter what, that's always at the very least been very interesting to me, if not very profound. So really, in all this introspection, what we're really looking for is the identification of something about yourself. Again, this could be anything, a, a character flaw, it could be as simple as perspective. You just get a new perspective on things. It, it could be a problem that you aren't recognizing or any number of things that are relevant to you in your life. So once the introspection gives you the identification, you can then move on to integration and then in your daily life start making changes for the positive. And on identification, that's really just the aha moment where things finally make sense, where something is identified, that bit of perspective that can help you in your daily life. It doesn't always occur in the dream state itself, though it often can. It can even be as simple as you're writing the dream down the next day and then suddenly it clicks and the meaning really hits you then. Or maybe you're reading a dream journal entry maybe a month or two down the line and then you, you say, hey, there's there's meaning here where, where I didn't see it before. So I think I hit all the points on everything I wanted to say. I gotta tell you, it took me a long time to record this video, so it's probably for the best I didn't answer it in stream because boy, I had a lot to say. At any rate, I hope it was very helpful. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget that you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Space Time Badass. And if you wanna support the channel, check me out on Patreon. And until next time, take it easy.